Ken Rather. Good, Good night. night. America at war. One week and far from over, says the president. Tonight, CBS News learns of the first U.S. request for outright reinforcements as supply lines face constant attacks from some of Saddam's toughest. But the push for Baghdad is still on, despite the sand, the weather, and the Iraqi harassment. Elements of the 173rd Airborne parachute into Iraq's north. A near riot and an unfriendly crowd for troops bringing food and water to a desperate town. And the swimming team saving ships and troops from dangers in the Persian Gulf. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Tonight, continuing coverage of America at War. Good evening. The war against Saddam Hussein's Iraqi regime is entering its second week tonight. U.S. military commanders in the field are calling for reinforcements, and CBS News has just been told the Pentagon is ready to send them. Here are some of the day's other headlines. The U.S. 173rd Airborne out of Italy parachuted into northern Iraq tonight. British and American units closest to Baghdad are braced for the main engagement with Saddam's Republican guards. No one knows when that's going to happen. The ferocious sandstorm finally has begun to break there. Some of Saddam's paramilitary units, possibly in civilian clothes and vehicles, are reported to be moving south, trying to cut vital Allied supply lines. President Bush, visiting Central Command in Florida, said the war is going well, but may not be short. We have CBS News correspondents deployed with U.S. and Allied forces and at other key locations around the globe to bring you accurate and comprehensive war coverage. We start at the Pentagon, where David Martin has tonight's big picture. David? Dan, the commander of American ground forces in Iraq is calling for reinforcements. He has asked the Pentagon to fly in part of an armored cavalry regiment from the states. That's about 700 soldiers to protect the supply lines in southern Iraq, which have come under unexpectedly fierce attack from Saddam's so-called Fedayeen fighters. Firefights broke out all along the supply lines connecting the rear areas to the front lines where the Army and the Marines are moving into position to do battle with the Republican guards on the southern approaches to Baghdad. The Iraqis driving pickups and SUVs and firing rifles and grenade launchers spring ambushes and flanking attacks but are badly outgunned. In the middle of bad conditions, our forces responded by destroying more than 30 enemy vehicles and killing enemy personnel in the hundreds. Despite the lopsided outcomes, the Iraqis have turned the routes which fuel and ammo trucks use to carry supplies forward into ambush alleys. I wasn't surprised that they kept coming back. I knew if they came once, I, I've been here before and done this thing before. If they came once, I knew they were going to come again. Combined with the blowing sands, the attacks are complicating the drive toward Baghdad as units have to stop and wait for their fuel supplies to catch up with them. But for the record, the Pentagon insists there's no delay in the battle plan. It is not uh, thrown the force off its plan. The logistics have flowed, continued to flow smoothly. Additional forces continue to push forward. The toughest fighting is in the south, but the target remains Baghdad and the regime. The Army's 3rd Infantry Division is now gathering just 50 miles south of Baghdad at Karbala, with the 101st Airborne Division out to the west of it. They are waiting for the Marines to arrive at Al Kut to the east before they begin a pincer move on Baghdad. American jets continue to drop bombs on individual tanks, headquarters buildings, and air raid shelters of the Republican Guard Division standing between the invasion force and Baghdad. The Iraqis can see the attack at Karbala coming and have moved in another brigade of Republican guards. Just to the east of Karbala, there is a huge lake, and military officers fear the Iraqis will blow the dam and flood the gap American troops would pass through on the road to Baghdad. Depending on when the sandstorm lifts, the attack on Baghdad could begin within days. Using a maneuver, American officers hope will catch the Iraqis by surprise. But we now know the Iraqis are still capable of pulling some surprises of their own. Dan? David Martin reporting live from the Pentagon. Tonight, for the first time since the war started, a significant U.S. force is on the ground in northern Iraq. Paratroopers of the 173rd Airborne Brigade, a rapid response unit based in Italy, jumped into Kurdish-controlled territory. CBS's Alan Pizzi is there. Alan, what do you see and hear and know? 
Dan, good evening. Well, all we know is that this is the first, as you said, significant drop of U.S. troops into northern Iraq. We believe this to be the vanguard of some other forces that will be coming. They'd been expected for several days. Unfortunately, the weather's been absolutely atrocious. I'm surprised they even got in tonight. What they will be doing will be, uh, as, as we understand it, to be a kind of a stabilization force to make sure that Turkish forces don't come in here, that they don't clash with the Kurds. The Kurds are hoping that they'll open up the northern front in a more significant way. Their leaders have express, expressed a lot of frustration at not being able to get stuck in against the Iraqis, but I don't think that's going to happen with the 173rd. The people that have come in here will be securing that airstrip. There are three they can use. We don't know at this stage which one they did use, but they're going to want to bring in some heavier vehicles, maybe Bradley's, but certainly their own transport. This is a big area for them to cover. There has also been some operations already in ongoing involving some American ground troops in the form of special forces. They've been going after Ansar al-Islam. That's a radical Muslim group that has an enclave here in northern Iraq. Um, there have been airstrikes against them. There have been more airstrikes, too, along the Iraqi front lines. Just before we came on air, we heard the sound of another strike um, in the distance along probably the front lines on the road leading to Kirkuk. The Kurds are also preparing five prisons to take in prisoners. They're, also, they're kind of hoping that uh, with the Americans here, maybe there'll be some surrenders, but certainly the Americans are ready to at least secure this front, Dan. Broadcasting live from northern Iraq, Alan Pizzi. The United States today denied Iraqi government claims that it targeted a civilian area in Baghdad. Pentagon briefers said the U.S. did not aim bombs or missiles at the heavily populated al Shaab neighborhood. The Iraqi government says the blast killed 14 people and wounded about 30 others, the worst civilian casualty toll yet known in Baghdad. The U.S. suggests Iraq's own anti-aircraft fire may have hit the area. One thing is clear, U.S. and British forces are being fought in many places on the way to Baghdad. This includes southern Iraq, places in and around Nasiriya, thought at one time to be secured. CBS's John Roberts reports on the evidence all around him there. The shattered American armor on the streets of An Nasiriya says it all. The U.S. Marines are dealing with an enemy that is both far more determined and far more capable of disrupting their schedule than anyone thought. And it is an enemy that has quickly adapted to find weak points in America's military might. For all of its firepower, the U.S. Marine Corps can't move very far or very fast without the vast logistics trains behind it to back it up, to rearm and resupply. The Iraqis are employing a strategy in this conflict, trying to tie up those logistics trains, preventing the Marines from moving north. At every point along the roads leading north, the Marines have been caught up in fierce firefights. Word from troops on the ground is that rather than regular army troops or even militia, they believe they are meeting elements of the Republican Guard that have traveled south to blunt the American offensive. That may be true or not, but the very mention of it is an indication that the opposing force is a tough one. The Marines moved today to end the traffic bottleneck caused by the weekend battle at An Nazaria, punching thousands of troops and hundreds of vehicles northward. But many of those troops ended up stopping to guard the road against possible attack. And the Marine unit that we're with, which fought a ferocious battle last night, was again heavily engaged tonight. Pentagon officials insisted today the wartime table is on track, but the Marines are already at least 36 hours behind their preferred schedule. They are now faced with the prospect of having to protect every inch of their supply line while moving ahead to Baghdad, raising the question, does the U.S. have enough boots on the ground to occupy a hostile country as large as Iraq? John Roberts, CBS News, with the Marines in southern Iraq. And then there are the Allied units now dodging bullets and wind-driven sand closer to Baghdad in and around Najaf, south of Karbala. CBS's Jim Axelrod is with those units. Officers from the 3rd Infantry Division now say the Army controls the bridges in and out of Najaf, cutting off the city from Iraqi reinforcements sent from Baghdad. This, while a brutal sandstorm, continues to rage in central Iraq. Don't let the rosy glow fool you. This sandstorm is nasty. By far the last 24 to 48 hours has been the worst sandstorms I have seen uh, in my uh, almost three years in, in country over here before. That's an officer in the plainer English of a corporal. It sucks been out there. 
But inside this tent, where the 3rd Infantry's 1st Brigade prosecutes its 